After the release of Episode 3, Revenge of the Sith, in May of 2005, Star Wars novels primarily focused on the post-New Jedi Order era, with the release of the Dark Nest trilogy in 2005, the Legacy of the Force series from 2006 to 2008, and the Fate of the Jedi series from 2009 to 2012. If you're interested in my reviews of those books, head on back to the 2023 reread, which was when I reread and in some cases for the first time read those novels. But there were novels from other eras being released as well. We saw more Clone Wars stories with the continuation of the Republic Commando series that began in November of 2004, as well as novels based on and inspired by the Clone Wars animated series starting in 2008. While the comics had delved into the Old Republic era beginning with the Tales of the Jedi comics in the 1990s, we saw our first novelistic glimpses into the Old Republic era with the Darth Bane trilogy, released in 2006, 2007, and 2009. There were some inner trilogy slash Imperial Dark Times novels like Death Star by Michael Reeves and Steve Perry, the video game tie-in novel of The Force Unleashed, and Michael Reeves' Coruscant Knights trilogy. Timothy Zahn returned to the original trilogy post A New Hope era with two novels, Allegiance and Choices of One, and we got a post-Return of the Jedi novel as well from Matthew Stover, Luke Skywalker and the Shadows of Mindor. So let's look at these briefly, era by era or group by group, starting with the Republic Commando series. The first Republic Commando novel, Hard Contact, was a video game tie-in novel, but more akin to the ruins of Dantooine's approach than Shadows of the Empire. Instead of adapting the game's plot, it tells a new story within the same setting. The Republic Commando game follows the four clone commandos of Delta Squad, while Travis's novel focuses on the four commandos of Omega Squad and a Jedi Padawan. In an interview with the Star Wars website, Travis said, This isn't a book of the game. It's a book using detail from the game. So I made sure that the equipment the squad used was the same as some in the game to ensure there was some common ground. But after that, the story went its own way. The five books of the Republic Commando series followed Omega Squad, the Jedi, Etain Chir Mukin, and various other characters through the Clone Wars and Order 66 into the Imperial Era. Although the final book, Imperial Commando 501st was originally intended to have a sequel before Travis quit writing for Star Wars, so it's fair to say that it does not end how she initially intended. Next up, the Darth Bane trilogy. Drew Carpishan worked off and on for the video game company BioWare from 2000 to 2018, and worked on both the first Knights of the Old Republic game as well as the MMORPG The Old Republic. In November of 2005, the Star Wars website announced that Carpishan would be writing a novel about Darth Bane. The originator of the Rule of Two and the Modern Sith Order, Darth Bane was first mentioned in the Episode I The Phantom Menace novelization, and appeared in two stories in 2001, the comic Jedi vs. Sith and the short story Bane of the Sith by Kevin J. Anderson. Path of Destruction was released in the fall of 2006 and was a surprise hit, so much so that Del Rey decided at the last minute to add a second Bane novel to the 2007 publishing schedule. Sue Rostoni, the editor from Lucas Licensing, described the five months allotted for Carpishan to write the book and Del Rey to publish it as almost unrealistic. Shelley called me late last week to propose an additional hardcover this fall. This fall. Yep. Del Rey figured the market could bear one more, and since the Darth Bane novel was a hit, a follow-up written by Drew seemed the best idea. 
So the untitled February 09 hardcover, previously the Plagueis novel, has been moved up, and Drew agreed to continue Bane's story. So we're off and running. The Darth Bane trilogy concluded with Dynasty of Evil in December of 2009. And as this book was announced in September of 2008, Carpe should have had a much more manageable amount of time in which to write the third and final book. Next up, the Coruscant Knights trilogy. The first book, Jedi Twilight, was finished by April of 2007, but it wasn't published until the following year, released between June of 2008 and January of 2009. The Coruscant Knights trilogy follows several characters that we either have heard about or met before in previous Reeves novels. The main character is Jedi Jax Pavan, the son of Lauren Pavan, who was killed by Darth Maul in Darth Maul Shadowhunter. There's also Lauren's old droid, I-5, who, after recovering his memories in the MedStar duology, finally tracks down Lauren's son, and the Celestin journalist Den Jur, who we were introduced to in the MedStar duology as well. Coruscant Nights is set a year after Revenge of the Sith and is set during that Dark Times era when Vader is hunting down Jedi and things look very bad for the burgeoning rebel movement. Speaking of Dark Times novels, we also have The Force Unleashed. With The Force Unleashed, Lucasfilm unleashed another multimedia project in the vein of Shadows of the Empire. Telling the story of Galen Merrick, or Star Killer, Vader's secret Sith apprentice. The Force Unleashed multimedia project resulted in two different games, one for PC, Xbox 360, and PlayStation 3, and the other for the Wii, the PlayStation 2, and the PlayStation Portable. A graphic novel, a reference book, toys, miniatures, and a video game tie-in novel, this one written by Sean Williams, one of the co-authors of the Force Heretic trilogy from the New Jedi Order series. Next on the release schedule were four various standalone novels. These were scattered throughout, with the first being 2006's Allegiance by Timothy Zahn, which followed the original trio of Luke, Han, and Leia, Mara Jade, a squad of stormtroopers who deserted their post, and Vader, and then was followed up in 2011 with a sequel, Choices of One, which also added Grand Admiral Thrawn into the mix. 2007 saw the release of Death Star by Michael Reeves and Steve Perry which followed a group of Death Star crew members for a three-year time period leading up to the Battle of Yavin. And the final standalone novel that I'll be reading during this reread is one of my favorites, Matthew Stover's Luke Skywalker and the Shadows of Mindor, which was released in 2008. Set a year after Return of the Jedi, Stover said on his blog that... Luke Skywalker in the Shadows of Mindor is my attempt to get the EU back to its pre-Zon roots, specifically to evoke memories of my all-time favorite Star Wars books, Brian Daly's Han Solo novels. Finally, we have novels based on or inspired by the Clone Wars animated series. The 3D animated Clone Wars series premiered in 2008 with a theatrical movie, although it's probably more accurate to view it less as a movie and more as multiple Clone Wars episodes scrunched up together with the opening and the ending credits taken out. This obviously saw the opportunities for more comics, more books, more toys, lots of more other licensing opportunities. And within the Expanded Universe, we saw five novels released by Karen Travis and Karen Miller. Karen Travis wrote the novelization of the film, Karen Miller wrote book number two, Karen Travis wrote book number three, and then Karen Miller ultimately wrote books number four and five. 
Originally, it was intended that they would alternate and that Karen Travis would write the fifth novel. But even before Travis quit writing Star Wars completely, she was too busy with the Republic Commando series and Karen Miller ended up writing books four and five. On the Star Wars message boards, Sue Rustoni described the idea behind the series as the following. The first one, The Clone Wars, was a loose adaptation of the movie, based on the movie. The rest of the Clone Wars books will be new stories set in the same era. Some may key off events of a particular episode, some may not. So these Clone Wars books take characters from the series like Ahsoka, but then also bring in characters from the existing expanded universe like Pelayan and Callista and people like that. So, my personal experience with these novels. This is an interesting mixed bag, so to speak, because I've read a number of these, and in fact some of these I like very much, but then there's other ones like the Five Clone Wars books written by the Karens that I've never read before. I'm excited to tackle the Darth Bane trilogy because they are completely new to me and everyone keeps recommending them to me. I'm interested in revisiting Zahn's original trilogy novels here because I felt like the first time around I enjoyed them but. That was basically my feelings. I enjoyed that but and then the but was a long string of things where I was like mm, mm, mm. I have no memories of Death Star or the Coruscant Knights trilogy although I am very excited to see I-5 again. With the Republic Commando series I think I started it and never finished it and my memories being that I enjoyed Hard Contact the most, but then sort of increasingly did not like them, but we'll see this go around. I have no experience with The Force Unleashed, either of the games or the book, so excited to read the book and gonna try to give the video game a try. And Luke Skywalker, The Shadows of Mindor is one of my favorite Star Wars books, but I feel like I've said that multiple times, so maybe... I don't need to repeat it ad nauseum. So, for 2024, I will be rereading the post Revenge of the Sith era of Star Wars novels, or what I've been calling Clone Wars Take Two. Next time, I will be reviewing the first book in the Republic Commando series by Karen Travis Hard Contact.